Yeah, incredible. I mean, earlier I was very optimistically saying they might have a 20% chance at best, <laughs> at least according to the, to the stats. But yeah, to actually do it is uh, another matter. So who did what less than 20% of chess players managed to do? Well, we're about to find out in this epic Chess World Cup quarterfinal. Now, this is Ramesh Babu Pragnananda playing with the black pieces. He's in a must-win situation after he lost to his good friend Arjun Eragaisi yesterday. Arjun had the black pieces. Prague's got it all to do. Let's check out this tense game. So e4 was played and Prague goes for a Sicilian. Natural response to immediately imbalance things. We get c3 on the board. So the c3 Sicilian it's known as or the Alapin. And this is the second time in the day we saw it because Magnus also played this with white against Gukes. Gukes just needing a draw just like here Arjun only needs a draw. We get knight f6 goading this pawn forward. It moves to e5, but the knight uh, finds a square here on d5, and after knight f3, knight c6, white now sets up the big center, we get takes, pawn recaptures, and d6 immediately starts to undermine it. Now we see this bishop develop into the game here, but it doesn't go immediately to b5, which it goes there in one move, because otherwise you run into queen a5 check, and after the knight protects the bishop, you're in trouble. Because you run into this stuff, you're going a pawn down, bad position. So instead, the bishop goes to c4 first, drives back the knight, and only then goes to b5 when there's no queen a5 check. So there's pressure on this knight. Now you can take here with the pawn. There's big theory there, but it's apparently quite drawish, is what Peter Lecko and David Howell were talking about. So instead, Prague goes for bishop to d7, and now this pawn does not take here. It can be played, looks good, shattering the pawn structure, but actually black goes e6, prepares to recoup the pawn like that, pawn structure's fine. So instead, knight c3 played. Important to start with that move, not with castles, because you have to defend the bishop. There's a threat otherwise to play knight takes on e5, opening up these bishops to stare at each other and you win a pawn because if you take here, knight recaptures. If you take back the knight, then you take the unprotected bishop. So after knight c3, we now see takes on e5, the pawn recaptures and g6 immediately shows that black wants to put pressure on this pawn. It does cramp black, but it could become weak. Now we see castles, bishop g7, queen e2 adds some protection. We see castles, pawn to h3, securing this knight, which is supporting the pawn. Now bishop e6, opens up the d file, also looks at these key squares, especially d5, and after rook d1, the queen finds a home on c7, pressuring against d5, and that's why bishop f4 to further cover the pawn, and now rook a d8, challenging the file. Rook a c1 from Arjun, Knight d5 now from Prague, so he improves that piece, which was stuck out on b6. He does initiate an exchange of minor pieces here, but he improves that light squared bishop, and after knight d4, queen b6, breaking the pin here, we reach a really critical moment of the game, because Arjun here gives up a pawn. Now there's pressure here on his knight in the centre of the board. So you have to do something about this and the bishop, you know, all of that stuff. What we see in the game is knight takes on c6. But what happens if bishop takes, pawn recaptures, and then you go b3 to protect this b2, uh, b2 pawn, which drops off in the game? Well, there's nothing clearly better here for black. But there are options like pawn c5, for example, the knight moves and simply bishop b7. And here, Prague's got the bishop pair, the board is opening up, there's an imbalance in the game, maybe this is what Arjun just didn't like. So instead, he goes for this move of knight takes, we get pawn takes and bishop c4. And we start to get this mass liquidation of pieces, no bishop pair for Prague, but he has just won a pawn. Now, another key moment for Arjun, he could take here, but maybe he didn't like giving up the a2 pawn, 
giving Prague the outside pass pawn. So instead, he pushes on with e6. We see the queen drop back to add some cover around the king. And now again, Arjun does not take here. He plays bishop e3 to win the outside pawn. You can play like this. And then this is one sample line of rook to c1. The queen can't take here. It's pinned to the king. You could get something like this. But again, maybe Arjun just wasn't loving the fact that the pawns aren't doubled anymore. Prague's got this past c pawn. And Arjun doesn't have one. Plus he's a pawn down. So he thought, okay, instead I'm going to go bishop e3. Yes, you can win this pawn, but now I've doubled your pawns, shattered them. So even though I'm a pawn down here, I've got this outside passer and your pawns are doubled. But it's a very, very tense and double-edged position because look how Prague now improves his pieces. So rook d7 covers the bishop. Now we see king to f7, pawn a4 starts running that passer. We get bishop e5, and look at how this bishop spins round and just cements everything in the centre. King e2, e5, and now here comes the black king. We get king d3, king e6, rook b7, the king centralises, pawn f3 now played to stop e4 check. c5, and although this bishop now looks stuck in, the black bishop, this is cemento, as Peter Lecco put it. Everything's cemented and you actually blunt the retreat of this white bishop here. So after a5, rook f8, a6 and rook back, well even though Prague just wasted a tempo it looked like, look at the bind that white is now in. Because you want to advance the pawn but the bishop stands in the way. So what if you move the bishop, well then simply the pawn drops, right? And how do you actually bring a king in and actually support that pawn? Well you can't, you know, you're blocked off here. And where does the rook go? If you retreat the rook, you lose the bishop. You can't bring the rook here. The bishop's on the square. Where can you actually go? Sure, you can thrash back and forth, but very hard to make progress. So king c3 was played. We just see some shuffling, and Prague starts pushing his pawns. King d3, h5. King c3 now played, and this time it's the wrong shuffle. It's a blunder. You should go king e3, to keep an eye on e4, but even then, black's got ways to improve. But what we see is king c3, and now e4 played, we get takes, king recaptures, and the black king is marching towards these pawns, these pieces still stuck, the a pawn not advancing. So king c4, very natural, to bring the king to support the pawn. Now we see king f4, and king b5 is played. You didn't want to take there. Let the a-pawn drop at the end of the line. We see pawn h4, and now rook d7 is played, because yes, Arjun wants to bounce this bishop around, but first he adds some pressure here and on this pawn. So we see king g3, bishop b6, c4 now thrown in as a distraction pawn, Bishop c7 now played, and this forces the capture here. Well, there is an alternative to take on g2, but you can't retreat the bishop this way like you can do in some of the other lines because then this pawn is dropping immediately. <clears throat> so we see takes on c7, rook recaptures. Prague now picks up this pawn, and we reach this really exciting position in a moment after the attack here, threatens take with check, rook blocks, where we get both sides making queens. So the white king comes in to shepherd that pawn, but here come the black pawns. The white rook intercepts. We get the exchange, both sides queen, but now look at this end game. Prague has got three pawns to Arjun's none. How do you hold this? Well, you don't is the answer. The clock time gets low, but still, it's just not enough to hold on to this game. Great technique from Prague, he gives the checks, slowly makes the progress with the pawns, and you're just never getting a perpetual in this position, right? Two pawns, none for white. Eventually, we see Prague force that one home, and this was the final position. This is where Prague did what less than 20% of players can do, which is win on demand with the black pieces at the elite level of chess. Awesome stuff from Prague, sets up the tie breaks coming tomorrow. What a mouth-watering encounter that is going to be. Do hit subscribe to never miss it. And if you want to see another epic game of chess, do check out the video on screen. Thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you soon.